Hi everyone, I am back with week three of our series, More Than a Hashtag. So Family Ministry is hosting Sack Lunch and Scripture every Monday at the Kales House for a social distance lunch and Bible study. Sack Lunch and Scripture is for all ages, so bring your lunch, Bible, and a lawn chair and come hang out with us. So now that summer is here, I've been shopping for some new sunglasses and maybe this is strange, but while searching for a new pair of shades, I found myself spending a little bit too much time um, researching options for my sunglasses, but I learned about something interesting, polarized lenses. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed before, but some sunglasses are advertised as coming with special polarized lenses. I never really knew what that meant before, but now I do. So check this out. Imagine you're at the beach trying to gaze at the ocean, but all you've got is a pair of cheap regular sunglasses. They'll work, of course. You'll be able to see without majorly having to squint, but if you were wearing a pair of polarized sunglasses, the experience would be completely different. The experience would be so different and the view so clear that you might wonder if you were actually wearing 3D glasses or something. If you looked down into the ocean, you'd be able to see several layers below the surface to depths you wouldn't have been able to see with regular non-polarized lenses. I mean, if a dolphin were to swim just below the surface of the water, a person wearing regular sunglasses may not even notice, but a person wearing polarized lenses would see the dolphin clearly. But why am I talking about sunglasses? because I think polarized lenses are a lot like the Bible. It's not easy to understand justice, like we've been trying to do for the past couple of weeks. Trying to understand justice without scripture is kind of like looking at the ocean with regular sunglasses. But when you seek to define justice from a biblical perspective, it's like looking out onto the ocean with the nicest pair of polarized sunglasses you can find. With scripture, we can see layers below the surface of this conversation about justice. So, I want you to put on your polarized sunglasses and take a look at what God has to say for us today. So for the last two weeks, we've been reading a passage of scripture that I'd like to revisit. This is Micah chapter six, verse eight. Know, O people, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you, to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Today, I want us to focus on two words from this passage, act justly. But what is justice? Here's a helpful definition that we've been using for the last couple of weeks. It's based on scripture, and I believe it sums up justice pretty well. Justice is righting wrongs or making wrong things right. In week one of this series, we talked about how justice is connected to the belief that we're all made in the image of God, created by him to do good works. We talked about who you are, a masterpiece, whose you are, God's child bought at a price, and why you are here, to join God on his mission to right wrongs. In week two of this series, we talked about how the world often looks at justice from the lens of retribution, where the punishment for an offense should fit the crime. But God's view of justice is deeper. His goal is mercy, restoration, and transformation. We've said that justice requires us to do something. We've said that anytime people who bear the image of God are mistreated, ignored, or oppressed, it's an injustice that must be made right. We've said that fighting for justice requires a partnership with God. 
the God of justice. And now today we're talking about the what and the how of justice. When we read the Bible, God provides us with polarized lenses to help us see clearly what justice should look like. And the Bible has a lot to say on this subject. So I'm going to read a series of scripture passages to you. I want you to listen closely, take any notes of any passages that stand out to you or cause you to have questions. Our first reading today is from Micah 6, verses 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Our next reading is from Zechariah 7, verses 9 through 10. This is what the Lord Almighty said, Administer true justice, show mercy and compassion to one another. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the foreigner or the poor. Do not plot evil against each other. Our next reading is from Psalm 82, verse 3. Defend the weak and the fatherless. Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Our next reading is from Proverbs 31, verse 8. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Our next reading is from James 1. It's going to be verse 22 and then verse 27. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. And our final reading is from Amos 5, verses 24. But let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. According to scripture, orphans and widows should not be in distress. The weak and fatherless should not be taken advantage of. Mercy and compassion should be shown to the poor and the oppressed. No one should be exploited by the powerful. No one should be voiceless or unheard. The refugee should be welcomed and given refuge. But we aren't always as passionate about these subjects as God is. We're not always very motivated to care about these issues. Some of these passages might make some of us uncomfortable or angry. You might think, wait, what is God telling us to do? That can't be right. If justice is about righting wrongs, we sometimes need to begin by righting the wrongs in our own hearts. Sometimes the fight for justice begins with confronting and uprooting the sins of greed and pride and idolatry and hardened hearts which can all cloud our vision of justice. Gary Hogan, president of International Justice Mission, is quoted saying, I have come to see questions about suffering in the world, not so much as questions about God's character, but as questions about the obedience and faith of God's people. When it comes to justice, God has given us responsibility. As we've learned so far, our responsibility is to do something, to love mercy and to act justly. That is our act of obedience toward God.